Right guys, so from here it's just the usual me breaking things down, looking at it a little bit different, seeing what I can find, it's just my opinion and my spell etymologies. So let's go. So let's start by looking at the Negev Desert. So that is where the Ashlam Tower is. And the name is derived from the Hebrew root Ngeb Negev, meaning to dry or to wipe dry, like to wipe out, could it be? Now, the Negev is shaped like a, a triangle and I wanna just briefly show you that with the apex at the south. So if you just quickly look on the map, you can just see how it's shaped and it is shaped like a triangle. But this is just me completely talking about something else. Doesn't Israel with Negev Desert look like a dagger <laughs> just weird it does it looks like a dagger you can even see the grip where you can put your hand in that's just something a little so where is the actual power plant on a map so there you can go there's the eye of sauron you can actually see it's roughly just above the middle in the negev desert in in the triangle so obviously I've done a bit on the triangle and it can mean many, many things. The triangle, it can be a symbol for the divine to something else that I want to show you now. So I just put a black triangle in there just so you can see it. And I roughly put where the eye is. Now, what do you see? Now, some of you will get it straight away, but I'll turn it around and there's a more better way that you can see it. So if you turn it around, it is, yes, the all-seeing eye. So the location and the triangle is just basically the all-seeing eye. And I, I found that intriguing. Uh, some people call it the eye of providence, but here's just an eye of providence. Glory be to the Father. And it's got the ray of sunshine and the eye like the tower. I mean, it's just me thinking out loud, but I thought that was rather intriguing and like, oh didn't see that coming so what is the significance of the Negev in the Bible I'm going to briefly touch on this it was also part of the land of the Canaan uh, which God promised to Abraham and his descendants as an inheritance so there's a basically a bit on it and there is other etymologies on it Negev a desert in southern Israel is mentioned several times in the Bible Negev or Negev is derived from the Hebrew root dry land some biblical passages use Negev to mean south because the Negev lay south of Judah in the Septuagint basically Greek version of the Holy Bible Negev is translated as desert so there's a little bit more on it but <laughs> this is just a, a big but when I also look at it I do think, yay, they look like minarets. And if people wonder what a minaret is, it's just a tower. As you can see, they do look one in the same, don't they? They look like a minaret. So I just wondered, what is the symbology of a minaret? And it says it represents the holy, pure and resolute soul which is given to that perfect man who is worthy of heavenly light. Obviously, I thought this was intriguing because obviously we're talking about the power station and the eye of Sauron and it's giving off light. So there's a little bit just quickly looking at the Negev and that. Now I've got so, loads more to go on guys but and etymologies or what I call spell etymologies you're gonna you're gonna hopefully your mind's gonna blow. Right guys so we've just looked at Negev quickly so I wanted to look at the actual physical location Ashalim. So I thought, hmm, what does that mean? As you can see on screen, if you could just quickly look, the name itself means tamarixix, a genus of shrubs and small trees. So nothing like, ooh, in that. But as I do, and how I break words down, as you can see on the screen, Ashalim, I thought, if I took away one letter, what would it reveal? So I took away the A. So it's not that much of a stretch. Some will still say it's a stretch, but <laughs> can't please everyone, can we? So that reveals and leaves Shalim. Now, some of you will already know who Shalim is, but if not, I didn't know. I'll, I'll go briefly into it. So Shalim derived from the triconsonantal <laughs> Semitic root SLM 
and also Romanize as Shalim or Salim or Salim was the name of a god in the Canaanite religion. So we've already briefly talked about Canaanite already. And here the name is from a Canaanite god. So Shalim or Shalem was a Canaanite god of dusk, sunset and the end of the day. Also spelled Shalim as I've showed you. And many scholars believe that his name is preserved in the name of the city Jerusalem. Wow. That is bloody significant. And here's another clue to what the name represents and who it represents. And you can see that star there. Yes, the evening star, Venus. So I'm going to briefly read out a little bit more from Wikipedia. So a tiny bit more on Shalim or Salim, as you can see. Salim, Ugrit. Romanized SLM is a pagan god in Canaanite religion mentioned in inscriptions found in Ugarit, now Rashama, Syria. William F. Albright identified Shalim as the god of dusk and Shaha as the god of dawn. In the dictionary of deities and demons in the Bible, Venus is represented by Shalim as the evening star and Shaha as the morning star his name derives from the triconstal sem semitic root which have talked about whole safe sound and peace an ugrit myth known as the gracious and most beautiful gods described shalim and his brother shaha as offspring of el through two women he meets at the seashore they are both nursed by the lady likely asherah or azareth and have appetites as large as one lip to the earth and one lip to the heaven so that's what it could represent the, the lights in other Ugrit texts the two are associated with the sun goddess which is intriguing considering what power it is using another inscription is a sentence repeated three times in a paramythological text let me invoke the gracious gods the voracious gods of Vim Vim is the most Semitic languages meaning day, Shalim and Shaha, twin deities, a bit like the aspects of Janos, deities of the dusk and dawn, were conceived of as its beginning and end. So you can just see the name and how it, it all connects. Shalim is also mentioned separately in Ugarit god lists and forms of his name also appear in personal names, perhaps as divine name or an epitaph. Many scholars believe the name Shalim, as I was talking about, is preserved in the name of the city Jerusalem. The god Shalim may have been associated with dusk and the evening star in the ethical sense of completion of the day, sunset and peace. So you can see how bloody significant this name is. Now, it's just my interpretation. Ashalim is the name of the place. He took the A away and it reveals so much. How can that be ignored? <laughs> how can it so you can just see wow I went oh wow <laughs> the significance of this when you just look at the name and again this is just me breaking this down showing you guys oh isn't it funny that you just take away air off the name and it's an ancient god that is basically Jerusalem was named after according to many scholars <laughs> so you can just see the significance of why they did it in this area and there's something coming up soon that i'm going to also show you that might make you go hmm or even wow few interesting sound bites is solomon you know this king solomon his name is derived from shalim that's interesting isn't it as is the word shalom so a lot of people use that and that's derived from the name shalim so when i, I saw this it intrigued me just have a look at it and you you cannot really see it but you can it inspired me to look a little bit deeper and that's why I made the original video so those two pools one filled with water it's like hmm what are they what are they symbolically wise so that gave me the inspiration to take another look so that's what I did because <laughs> we all get inspired by different things so I want to finish with this now because I only want to make a short video on it so it's said that Venus Shalim is associated with the third eye that's also intriguing me and you can just quickly 
search engine and you can just see a few examples of people asking or telling you that's what it symbolizes amongst many other things so from this i thought can i find a, a better picture and i found it guys this is what blew me away and why i wanted to make the video as you can see have a look at it and this is when it was at its beginning it has changed a little bit but this is the beginning symbolizing the beginning tell me what you don't see there is a human with his skull is slightly head down with the light the eye of sauron or the ashlim tower in the rough location of the pineal gland tell me you do not see it and do those pit things which i've changed now but at the beginning do look like they removed the eyes so they're emphasizing the eye the third eye the light knowledge the morning and evening star the pineal can you see it guys and i'll put a rough image of the pineal at the side and then the skull tell me that's not roughly similar to what you see in the sky and it just on the screens sorry and it just i just went wow so the tower the eye of sauron the eye the third eye is being symbolized by that tower and when it was created the ashland power plant they made it to look like a human anatomy the skull emphasizing on the pineal and the light of the evening star and obviously the duality the gemini of the morning star the evening star <laughs> it just blew me away and is that represented by the two eyes at the bottom or circumpunct <laughs> you can call them that too so guys that was a little short video on the uh, solar tower in israel known as the eye of sauron so if you enjoyed it please like share and subscribe and if you want to help me in the channel you can just buy me a bar which is buy me a coffee and the link the link the the logo the crest the barcode whatever you want to call it is on screen now guys so hopefully you enjoyed that short video because i really enjoyed it maybe i'll look into it a little bit more deeper and other things but for a quick short video i think that was quite intriguing right guys take care stay safe and always wear a smile